Chill Season is adding three brand new weapons, including a pencil charger, space gun, a slurpy roller, space gun, and a space gun, space gun. Get out of here, Bo. Bye bye, Bucket. My new best friend is the space gun. So this weapon has good ink efficiency, pretty good range, pretty good fire rate, pretty good painting ability, pretty good mobility, okay accuracy. This weapon doesn't sound too bad. Five shot kill. There's only one other weapon in the entire game that's a five shot kill, the arrow spray. There's no way this thing is just long arrow spray, right? Five matches later. This thing is just long arrow spray. Let's reveal what you really are. Garbage. Why would Splatoon 3 add three new weapons that are complete dog shit compared to everything else? You know, every weapon has a niche and can serve a purpose. Big Swig Roller has amazing paint ability. Some zones get completely covered in a single flick. Nova Shot can be helpful mid-range support. And Snipe Rider is in the game too. These weapons are dog shit. Anyways, for 100 matches I tortured myself, I mean I had a great time using the space gun. So look, this is a video sort of explaining some ways I found to use the space gun. This is not a video telling you that you should use the space gun, or that it's even worth trying the space gun, or that the space gun is secretly top tier. Over on Twitter, the post-iceberg titanic of social media platforms, I asked for opinions on the space gun and the results were mixed but trended negative. However, I do think that every weapon in Splatoon can be good in the right hands. However, if your hands do well with the space gun, then those hands of yours might be better off with a different weapon. But here's what I learned from playing the space gun. The main weapon is pretty doo-doo. I have no idea why it is not a four-shot kill, especially since this is basically a second replacement for the dual sculpture from Splatoon 1, which was a four-shot kill. In a match against moving targets, it sucks shooting someone four times and not being able to secure a kill, whereas any similar range shooter, like the Pro, or the Jet, or the 96, or the Squeezer, really most other weapons in the entire game would have done it. Aerospray also kills in 5 shots, but Aerospray kills that fast. Nova Shot feels like you're slapping them with a wet napkin. So unless there's a future update that buffs it so that 4 shots do 99.9 .9 damage, or if main power up or damage up or something similar could buff its damage, but even then, this is not a 20 kills weapon. It's a 20 assists weapon. It's pretty good at painting, and with its high fire rate and pretty good range, it's better suited for chip damage. Doritos! And you're not really even here for just the main weapon, because every weapon has a purpose. Not always a good purpose. And the Nova Shot's complete package, the main, sub, and special, help it carve out a specific niche. Point Sensor. I'm not gonna sit here and try to trick you into thinking Point Sensor is better than like a Splat Bomb, or a Burst Bomb, or a Fizzy Bomb, okay most bombs, but I do think it's better than people give it credit for. Chuck a Point Sensor towards someone, you don't even need to be that accurate with it. Then not just you, but your whole team knows where that player is for the next 8-ish seconds. Now people who primarily play with their team on a voice call on Discord, not Nintendo's dumbass phone app, what the hell is this, may be thinking, I can do the same thing for free at any time, just by speaking. And it's true, but Point Sensor gives you their precise location, not just left or two in mid. I don't know about y'all, but there is so much shit on screen in Splatoon. You're skirmishing like a splash or a carpet who's moving at a mile a minute. A Point Sensor lets you know their exact location without having to decipher through all this visual noise. Ninja Squid is currently a very popular ability, so spamming Point Sensors, learning the location of hot local singles in my area completely invalidates their crop top based strategy. Just keep doling out an average of like 3 point sensors every 10 seconds like you're a CVS pharmacy giving out 17 coupons for shampoo that expire in like 2 days. Killer Whale 5.1 Take 10 missiles, turn it sideways, Boom, that's Killer Whale. This special can feel kind of useless in Turf War, but in the objective-based ranked modes, Killer Whale can be a game changer when used at the right time. Snipers and Splatling hate this one simple trick, spam Killer Whale. Nova Shot is one of the fastest, if not the fastest Killer Whale charge in the game, so you can flood them with whales like they left the gate open at SeaWorld. This displacement special distracts them, giving you a chance to close the distance and finish them off or maybe let a better suited teammate finish them off. But you can help. 
Killer Whale hard counters a lot of specials, including Crab Tank, that is, you know, kind of common in the meta right now. It's just a big nope button for a lot of specials. And if you pair Whale activation with your main weapon, you could actually become an almost okay killing weapon for a few seconds. The way I play the weapon that was most effective for me is PPW, Point Paint Whale, in that order. Top priority, throw point sensors, then paint the map so it's hard for the other team to make offensive plays, then use Killer Whale as often as you can. Oh yeah, and help do objective things when it's time to do that. Even if you're way far away from the actual battle, you can wail to know where someone is, then point sense them to know where someone is, and then your teammates can finish them off to know where someone is. In hell! That's why it's called the splatter shot Nova. You're like an orbital satellite, continually doxing the opponent's location like you're a teenager on Tumblr in 2012, and surging down orbital strikes in the shape of Shamu. You know, it's a great weapon if you have three really good teammates, which could be said about every weapon, but hang on! It's more like the Nova helps your three other teammates do exponentially better. If you're allied with three hyper-aggressive Slayer players, their job to get kills is so much easier if they know exactly where their target is at all times, like they're playing with wall hacks turned on. Plus, you'll keep the map well painted, and the other team constantly pressured by non-stop killer whales. The other day, me, Volpixie, Casero, and Vasco Games hopped into Anarchy Open, and I gave them the instructions of get kills. And we proceeded to go on a 10 game win streak. Even with doing verbal callouts, the point sensors made it so that they were playing the game on easy mode. This weapon is ideal in a situation where three people are, you know, X rank players, they've had Splatoon for years, and the fourth person, the Nova player, just got the game like a week ago, so all they can do is support and dox. The fun part of this arrangement is that the Nova player gets to be number one overall splatter every single round. Just, just, just don't check how many more assists. What blood doing? He think he on the team. If I'm getting shot at and I know I'm gonna lose because the main weapon is often useless in combat, I like to throw a point sensor as I'm dying. You can't defeat me. I know, but he can. But on the other hand, this isn't exactly the last man alive clutch it out weapon. It's very snowball-y. If the match is going well, Nova Shot will make it go even better. If match doesn't go so well, Nova is not gonna be the one to turn it around, at least not solo. Remember, PPW, that's how I played it for a while, until I ran into a Nova player on the other team who is much better than I am, and from what I can tell, their plan was to spam Killer Whale as often as possible. So you can do that too. But I'm not that good, their movement was incredible, I got motion sickness from watching the game from their perspective. Oh, that's why it's called the Space Gun. <laughs> Recommended abilities. I don't know, man. These ones seem pretty good. Here's an outfit I threw together using my leftover chunks from Salmon Run. Man, this outfit has negative levels of drip. You put this on and rain starts rising. Anyways, I got special charge to spam whale more often, sub power increases throw speed, and more importantly, tracking duration of point sensors. That could be useful. And the final infinity stone of the Nova Shot Gauntlet, Opening Gambit. Using this ability is the most fun way to play the space gun. You get three additional main power slots of swim speed, run speed, ink resistance, and intensify action for the first 30 seconds of the match. As powerful as it is, an amazing ability that only lasts 30 seconds isn't that good. Just ask your mom why she left your dad for Alejandro. So in Splatoon 2, they injected it with some turbo Viagra, so the duration would extend for seven and a half seconds for every kill or assist you get. Still, nobody really used it. So so recently in Splatoon 3, they slathered it up with essential oils and horse steroids to extend it even more. So now you get an additional 15 seconds added to your buff clock for every kill or assist you get. And you are stupidly fast with this thing, like Usain Bolt on cocaine when this is active. Especially if you stack it further with more movement abilities. Even if you die, the ability remains active until your flame clock runs out. All that being said, the ability is called Opening Gambit not opening good ability for the rest of the match. You do run the risk of losing it at any time, but with the Nova Shot, it's pretty easy to extend the duration within the first 30 seconds of the match, since you get an assist if any point sensor marked opponent dies. At the start of a match, you can pop an early killer whale to slow their approach and see where the other team is, or just use your eyeballs and look for where the other color paint is, there's gonna be a guy there. Then throw two or three point sensors, and decent teammates are almost guaranteed to at least get a kill or two for you, especially if you 
you shoot at them as well. But to make it last for a full length 5 minute ranked battle, you need at least a total of 18 KA, which is not impossible, but again, you do run the risk of your gambit clock running out earlier than you planned and simply not having an ability there for the rest of the match. Sometimes you can easily extend it for the whole match, other times you lose it after the first 30 seconds. While seeing how long you can extend opening gambit is a fun little meta game you can play each match, is it really worth the risk for a movement buff and a jump shot accuracy buff? Maybe. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below with any tips and opinions on the Spider Shot Nova, and today's comment code word is comment, comment, comment if you made it all the way through the video. And uh, that's it, video's over.